This episode of UFish TV is brought to you by Robust Automotive and Marine Paints, Shimano Unequaled Engineering Excellence, Ray Marine Electronics, Bar Crusher Boats, Suzuki Outboards, and Club Marine Insurance. There we go. This one's going too. Browns at night, they don't go as hard. So if you ever want to get a big one, night time's the best. <laughs> Just set the story. What, what was I doing and what were you doing? Well, I was taking care of business. Up in the toilet up block. In the toilet, and I even heard my rod go from up there. <laughs> and Winger was sleeping. I was in the car. He's a very thick fish. Oh wow. <laughs> Look at that. Oh wow. Oh. Beautiful fish. There we go. Flip his tail in. Let's have a look at beautiful tail. Wow, what a beautiful looking fish. That's a round trout for you. And you know what? Mm. I think I've got another one on over there. You know what? <laughs> He'd be four pound nearly. Nearly four pound. Yeah. He's a four pound fish. It's 2.20 a.m. in the morning. We've just driven up from Melbourne in the, in the blankness of night. We only come to Lake Bulamero here just to catch bait. But while we were setting up the rods, we chucked a couple out and we thought we'd have a rest. Because Warren goes, there's a good chance of a brown. And there we go. And, and what I think is fascinating is just 20 metres here, there's a camp of fishermen. Just over here on the other side of the crusher is another camp of fishermen. And they've been fishing all day and all night without nothing. And, um, Warren Carter, Mr. Charter, has turned up with his techniques. Okay. Okay. Come on, boy.
that didn't take very long at all. Well, I guess we've got to go there now. I'll go check the other rod. Because that was screaming too. <laughs> He's just set this alarm up in the car right next to my head. And he goes, oh, if you hear some beeping, that I means we've got a fish on. So I'm sort of in La La Land. And um, just about into deep REM sleep. And I just hear this screaming noise right, right near my head. <laughs> He's got electronic wireless alarms. They connect from the rod holders through wireless to a unit in the car. So what I'll do is... Your headlight. I'll have to... I'll have to go down the jetty. He's going around the end pole. So we'll see how we go. Okay. What I don't want to do, I don't want too much pressure on this fish. I'm only fishing four pound line, and he has gone around the end pole. So I'll just wind up slowly on it. remember someone saying why are you casting next to the jetties and someone responding well I'll worry about that when I hook up <laughs> we got one we lost one okay and how long when, when did you start fishing here at Lake, Lake Bull and Mero? I started fishing Bully probably about 1990 uh, and I started fishing here using uh, a coarse fishing method uh, using maggots and feeders and it produced a lot of fish for me but a lot of small fish so since then, I've had two good friends of mine, Keith, Hamil uh, Keith Chapman and Andrew Hamilton, and uh, they've shown me a bit over the years, and it's been greatly appreciated. Techniques so, and ideas and methods and... All that, all that. But basically, uh, the method I fish here is I have me float. Now, this float is actually filled half with water, and what oh, that yeah. does is that actually becomes the casting weight to actually oh. push the float out. These two other floats, they actually suspend the bait with a stopper and then we follow that down and I'm fishing four pound line all the way through right down to a size 2.0 hook. Now that hook will vary uh, on the bait that I'll be using. So we'll have mud eyes and we'll have live gudgeon and even live minnows. So it's just a question of what we can find in the bait traps to what we're going to put on the hooks. So using a bait runner this is a cute little bait runner, isn't it? Yeah, and um, out of all my fishing that we do, it's the only time I fish a bait runner mode. Even on snappy that. And that's an eggy rod. That's a Shimano 7R foot eggy rod. Nice one. One of the early prototypes, I'd say, from my garage. All right, well, let's go do it. All right, so what's that, a little tiny gudgeon? Do you want to bring it up and show us the gudgeon? I've never seen one. Show me one. He's a little bit undernourished because he's um, been in a bucket for two weeks. Okay, so it's just a little bait fish. Yeah, just a little bait fish. Just native to these lakes. Okay. We'll go put him out. Okay, that's cool. What is that called? It's just a little bite detector. So as soon as that line moves, she goes, she beeps. It doesn't just beep there, but it beeps up to what, 300 metres or something back to your car if you need be. If you need be, yeah. So you can have a transmitter and um, just covers the distance further. So you might want to have a snooze. 
There we go. Just a waiting game again. It's not that small. Another one. I was actually looking at the alarm on the seat of the car when you heard it beeping live. I went straight over. We thought it has gone. Warren's picked up the rod, hooked it, and it's on. Let's go and have a look at this fish. Apparently it's a male, male brown. Yeah. He's not a big fish that one, but not for Bull and Mary style. But he's a nice pan sized fish. Oh, the colours in those browns. Have a look at them. Now we just talked about the first <laughs> fish. We talked about the first fish how there's people camping here. And they've caught nothing all day. Yeah. <laughs> you said to me, oh, I'm pretty confident winger, I can pull it. It's all in the technique, it's all in the rig. Now we've got people standing out at a jetty right now who have just come and basically cast over everything. And we're still catching fish. Still catching fish. <laughs> Here we go. A lot smaller, but a beautiful male. Okay, come on, baby. Beautiful work, Mr. Warren Carter. Very impressed. We were going to show you how we catch these gudgeon. With a start like that, we've consumed too much time. We're just going to have to go with the, the bucket of old bait we got from two weeks ago. We've got to head off to Lake Parham Beach, Western Victoria. Directly behind the back of the boat, we have a weed bank. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm going to set my floats up just short of the weed bank. Now, the one thing I do not, what I don't want to happen, is the boat to your on me. So that's why I've gone and put the pole in. I've got the front anchor in. I've got a, a firm fixture, so the boat can't yaw. And those floats will sit perfect. Just don't just get the skin. You don't want to go too deep because you, you're killing. And we, and we don't want that. He's wriggling like a little trooper. Thank you. 
Ahnung. Pretty good reading, ja, Red Wing. So there we go, another brown trout, just patrolling that weed bank out the back and he fell to that humble mud eye. We'll put him back. Oh. so far mr carter he gave a little bit of little, little bit of wing of free time in the middle section of the show just to keep it pure now i'm back and we're actually going to do something a bit more exciting we're switching over to tournament style angling with warren carter who's one of the best in the country what mate like that two kilo fish right behind the lure is, that, is he spooked that means we'll come back we'll come back and we'll get him i can't believe it there you go well, obviously, we've got the electric motor going in the bar crusher, and we're snooching around in these snags, casting hard bodies. It's exciting. Let's get, let's get straight with it.
how do you compare this to brim fishing in the style of fishing you're doing right now? Oh, I think brim fishing is a lot more finesse. Um, with trout, you can really, really rip it, you know, and get that lure really moving. The trout don't like that pause, so you really just got to keep that lure moving. What about for excitement value? Mate, they're actually explosive when you hook them up. They're out of the water and <laughs> it's awesome. It is pretty exciting though, isn't it? Yeah. You having fun? All the time, mate. If I've got a rod in my hand, I'm always having fun. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, look at it. It's a little baby rainbow. That is not what we've come for, but it is gorgeous. That beautiful little thing. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. So basically, that's a that's trout that's been put in here. Yes, and the big ones will actually feed on that size. Really? Yeah. So how much smaller than that are they when they put them in here? Probably another 100 grams maybe, but that's about almost the limit. Of what they put in? Yeah. And they put in thousands of them in here? Thousands. So this is what they call a put and take? Put and take. So they put it in so we can take them. Keep going mate, get that big one for us. Oh, was that hit? No. My heart's going like this, you know. What happened? Just another big follower come up right up behind the lure. Just turned away. It's been a tough day. These fish are just coming up right up behind the lure and just turning away. They're just not committing. Hoping maybe the last hour of light might be the trigger point. Bomber is very low. Anyway, keep casting. We've seen some beastly big brown trout, big males hooking up speed and coming up behind the lures and smacking it with their nose. We've been really unlucky. But you know what? This is going away because this is how reality fishing is. This is how it is. We all miss. We all have, you know, great days, but we all have bad days. And it's important that we show you that. And it was such a beautiful place that I think it was worth showing anyway. All I'll say is, to be continued. What do you reckon, Carter? Never say die. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever give up. <laughs> Have another cast.